a rundown of what this thing was doing before. Before it wouldn't rev past 3,000 RPM, she goes straight into limp mode like it was walking on crutches. Still does it. Still does it. What in the world? Out here. This is what I should have done earlier, but let's see. <laughs> Yeah. Welcome back to the channel. So today's video is going to be one that you guys have been asking me about, and that's how to properly scale injector flow rate on your Gen 3 LS-based ECU using HP Tuner software. Some of you guys may be wondering, what's this even? What do I need to know? Like, why do I need to know this? In, you know, I've got good injectors. The injector manufacturer has given me the perfect injector data. Why do I need to scale it or change it? To make it work for my application. Well, that's exactly what we're going to talk about. When you're dealing with boost on a stock ECU from the Gen 3 era, you're going to run into airflow limitations. You're going to run into torque based issues. You're going to run into running out of resolution on your ignition timing table. All that stuff can be resolved with injector flow rate tuning. Let's go ahead on and dive in and we'll talk about all of it. All right, so first of all, let's talk about why I use that Dr. Tuneable clip at the intro of this video. So some of you guys may remember seeing it I think it come out like February ish, like 22. That video become as long as what it was because of this issue that we're going to discuss today, and that is injector flow rate scaling. So just some backstory on that video. George had picked up that truck, 2005 or six GMC Sierra. It was a factory six liter truck, which I thought was kind of strange. It's very rare to see that, but apparently that's what it was. But the previous owner had done pulleys, LSA supercharger, big cold air, ice box, injectors, fuel pump, camshaft, all that stuff. Well, apparently the truck had, once it got taken to be tuned, the tuner could not get the thing to go over 3000 RPM, just kept going into limp mode. And apparently the way I understood it is the tuner spent weeks on trying to figure this out, just couldn't do it. So finally the guy was like, you know what, screw this, I'm just gonna sell it. So apparently George bought it because of that. So he brings it to Nate, Nate tries to tune it. Nate starts off with the file that was currently in it, made some cleanup adjustments, wasn't happy. So Nate had called me and one thing I'll tell you guys is the first thing I'm always going to recommend to you guys is if you know that you have inferior parts on your vehicle, you know that it's a possibility that it, that could be the issue. If you know that, go and swap them out. So apparently the truck apparently had an unknown fuel pump if I remember correctly. So that George ended up swapping out for like a DW400 or something similar. And apparently the truck had a set of decapped injectors, which I will tell you that I don't have a problem with decaps when they're done correctly but the majority of the time they're not done correctly. So I believe he then swapped out the injectors for the DW95s, if I remember right. So anyways, they get the tune dialed in, still doing it. Wide open throttle, 3000 RPM, shuts itself down. Still does it. Still does it. And so after hours upon messing with this, Nate even tries a new operating system. How far can a dog run into the woods? As far as he wants to. Until he starts running out of the woods. <laughs> Well, now we can see what it is probably though. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to see it too. Truck still does it. Calls me, asks me, hey dude, you got any ideas? And right away, as soon as I said it, he's like, I knew it. I told him a scale injector flow rate. He already knew it. I didn't have to tell him how to do it. He just, he already knew. He's like, man, I was almost there. I should have called you hours ago. Out here. This is what I should have done earlier, but let's see. <laughs> Yeah. That's what I was talking about. I honestly have no idea what the gauge said. <laughs> it was it was a little rich, <laughs> but she was happy. Oh, oh man. we do. Oh, Finally, I can't believe that's what it was. Yeah, I wanted to do that earlier. Yes, two oh, yeah, all. Sam clapping. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, he goes through scales injector flow right real quick. Truck starts ripping. Everything was happy. This what we're about to discuss can, has caused so many people issue, and so you have to understand the whys when to use it. Let's go ahead on and dive in. So the tune file we're gonna to use today is gonna to be a 2006 Silverado 5.3 stock file. Now I wanna use this because the P59 drive-by-wire stuff is traditionally what gives people the most issues when it comes to injector flow rate scaling. Reason being is because the earlier PO1s, they really don't go into limp mode. They may go lean, they may get pissy, but they don't go limp mode. 
you know, most guys like they'll throw a code. The guys will just turn those codes off. It's just the P59 trucks are the ones that cause more issues, as you guys saw in the in Dr. Tunamal's clip at the beginning. So what we're gonna do, let's build a tune for say a customer has this truck, 06 Silverado 53 stock, that they've just bolted a turbo on. They haven't done anything else that no converter, no camshaft, no nothing else, just stock truck with a turbo which to me is a super cool combination and it, a lot of you guys like i don't know why people don't do this more like i've tuned so many stock trucks with turbos on there and they're badass like they drive like stock obviously but they have all the power anyways let's go ahead on and show you what, what we've got going on right now so right now if you pull up the main ve table in a stock file the manifold air pressure stops at 105 kpa so some guys will tune this thing math only they'll leave it just like this they'll leave the stock map sensor in there and that's just how they run it does it work? Technically, yes. Is it absolute bullshit and should never be done? 100%. You should never, ever, 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 ever tune a turbo truck in math only mode. You just shouldn't. What happens when you guys, you know, blow a wastegate line and the thing goes to the moon? Math's just going to send it. It's just, you're going to run it out of math. You're going to run out of fuel. Truck's never going to know. Don't do that. Like, let's give, let's give these things the, the biggest fighting chance at surviving. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go on and upgrade the operating system. Now, again, because we're talking about a completely stock truck with a turbocharger, we're just going to use a two bar operating system. So if you're unaware, one bar is atmospheric pressure. So depending on where you live, most of the time, atmospheric pressure is between 14.5 to 14.7 PSI of atmospheric pressure. That's what we live in. That is, that's how we live. So when you go into two bar, two bar is when you have double atmospheric pressure. So we'll just say, say your atmospheric pressure is 14 and a half PSI, two bar is gonna be 14 and a half PSI of boost or 29 PSI of absolute pressure. So then three bar is gonna be an additional 14 and a half PSI over that. So double atmospheric boost or three times atmospheric pressure for absolute pressure. So, we're going to use two bar for this. So in order to do that, all you got to do is go into operating system and you're going to click apply code modification under the speed density two bar tab. So this is a little pop-up going to happen because it wants you to save it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to file save as, and we'll just call this two bar OS. So what you have to do is you close that out and we're going to pull it back up. I'm going to search under here. There we go. All right. So now when you look under OS, there's nothing there. So if you're ever tuning on somebody else's vehicle or you buy a vehicle and you want to change operating systems and you click OS and nothing's here, it may actually already have an aftermarket operating system. So if you do want to check it, just, just so you guys are aware, you can click this little information buttons, calibration details. And it will show you this was the factory operating system it had and hp tuners has converted it over to this and it tells you which operating system it has so some guys you may have an operating system that has a one bar math enhanced operating system which allows you for real-time tuning things like that this one is what we chose all right so now first thing you're going to notice is the main v table is it's incorrect it changed the axis here but it didn't change the numbers here so first and foremost, before we address this, we're gonna also look at our map sensor characteristics. Now, as you guys saw, and I believe it was the Pro Charge Truck video, when you click this, it's always gonna change your map sensor data, even if you already had it set up for a three bar map sensor, two bar map sensor, or whatever. But anyways, let's say we're gonna use the Cobalt SS, like the, the two bar map sensor that has a little orange at the top. So that one is actually 200 KPA and it's 7.99 is the offset. Some will say eight, some will say 8.99, 7.99 is what works for me. That's just what I always use. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our main V table and we're going to set this up because this is a stock truck and we're just going to have boost. We need to actually scale this correctly. So we're going to open up the stock file. Actually, I need to open it up this way. So we're going to open up a separate file because if we tried to have our stock file in comparison, to the background it's going to gray itself out because the axis is different. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull up our main V table. Now keep in mind, I'm on the stock one. It's not the two bar one, I'm on the stock one. And we just gonna have to copy stuff over. So we're gonna take this 30 row, we're gonna copy this, move it over to here, do our 40, so on and so forth. All right, so now that we're at the 100 KPA row, you're gonna wonder what should we do down here? The first thing I can do is I can just drag this and we'll just there. So from 100 to 210, it's all the same now. 
So let's talk about the injector flow rate on a Gen 3 ECU. So a Gen 3 ECU does not comprehend injector flow rate going into boost. So if you're running a factory returnless setup, then the best place to start now, you use this, use this under your own discretion, but the best place to start on that one is gonna be doing like a 40 multiplier, so 1.4 down to 210 KPA row and then going 100 to 210, dragging it down. And this will get you in the ballpark. So just so you guys can see, you'll see that as boost comes in, it ramps up. Now, the reason why this looks like it does is again, because the ECU doesn't comprehend injector data in boost. So this is one of the main reasons why we try to suggest everybody to go and do a rising rate regulator. Reason being is because even though your ECU doesn't comprehend injector flow rate in the boost, it's not gonna look at it in, ma in manifold pressure. So if you have a one-to-one -one rising rate regulator, it adds one PSI of fuel pressure for every one PSI of boost, and that effectively makes your injector flow rate the same. So if that was the case, you could technically just start off just like this, where you have the 100 KPA row and have it copy down here and bring it right here so you'll see where it's flat. Traditionally, you'll end up somewhere in the middle of this and the one that's 40. So if you want to just, if you want to know that you're going to be probably a little bit rich, you could do like a 1.2 multi here and then just bring it down like that. And that'll kind of get you in the ballpark. 1.2 is probably going to have it just a little bit too rich. 1.15 may be your multiplier, but as you get more used to tuning one of these, you'll figure it out. So what I'm going to do is let's just say, let's just say it's because it's a bone stock truck. We're going to call it the 1.4 multi. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to make this 1.4 multi. Now, again, this is an estimate. So please use this at your own discretion because this could be 1.5, 1.6. We don't actually know until we're tuning on it. So this is what our V table looks like right now. So I'm going to go ahead on and we'll say this as this is what the heat map currently looks like. So again, this is the table that we're going to build that is going to be based off of a 100% stock truck with a turbo on there. So obviously now to have a stock truck with a turbo on here, we're going to have to upgrade our injectors. So let's go ahead on and let's do that. So for this application, what injector would I recommend? So let's say this is a pump gas application and that because the factory injector flow rate is 24 ish. Let's see what it shows on this. One. Yeah. 24 and a half pounds of injector flow rate. Let's go ahead on. Let's just, let's, let's say we're going to use a 50 pound Delphi, which is the injector data from a 2011 to 13 Escalade flex fuel. So I'm going to go ahead on and input that, that data in. All right. So I've gone ahead on and changed the injector flow rate. Now, if you're a member and you would like to have the injector flow rate for a gen three version of a 50 pound Delphi injector, you're more than welcome to email me at the remote tuning email down below. Also, just so you guys are aware the my website is active right now. Now it's not completed. So I am going to actually have some of these files that it's going to be downloadable to you guys. Now, what I'm thinking right now is I'm thinking about having injector data to where it's going to be a digital download where you'll pay like maybe a dollar or two dollars or something like that and you'll be able to download injector data and the same thing is going to be with some of the example files that i build in video i'm thinking about having them to where they're able to be downloaded as well something super cheap but just that way you guys can use it as reference but i haven't gotten to that yet but if you're looking for a base file or remote tuning or anything like that then again my email is always in the description but the website is www.skytuning that's s-k-y-e tuning.com it's also, there's plenty of names for it. It's also tuning-tips.com. It's also tuner, no crust.com. So I got a couple different domains. I'm going to be building on this website more and more as we go on, but this is just something that I'm building personally. And so it's, it's taking me some time. Like right now I'm working on the drop down boxes for where you'll be able to select your make and model a vehicle and be able to select your tunes from there. I've, I've got all the making models down, but now I've got to start actually adding the data in. So it's a little bit tedious. But anyways, injector data is in. So let's go ahead on and move on to the next step. All right. So now that we have our injector data in, in the correct way, using the actual injector flow rate for the 50 pound Delphi's, we need to go in and half it. So we're going to go under flow rate versus KPA and we're going to half this. So now we end up with 24.9 at zero KPA of manifold vacuum and 27.3 at 80 KPA of manifold vacuum. Now keep in mind, this data is going to be used for a returnless style fuel system factory on, I think it started like in the 0304 era and then went to the, like the 07 classic. Then obviously it continued on gen four stuff. Now that that's done, 
we need to half our V table. We need to half our mass airflow sensor. Now, here's our current V table. And all we gotta do is multiply times 0.5. And this is where we're going to be at right now. So the shape is still the same. It's just obviously the numbers are halved. So the next thing is going to be the math calibration. So I personally, if I was building this exact combination, I was going to do a 4L60 on the stock 5.3. I would still personally reuse the mass airflow sensor, but I would actually have the mass airflow sensor on the intake for the compressor of the turbo. That way it's a drawing through the mass airflow. It just, it ends up working out to where it's less turbulent. Everything's happy. If you do want your math in the charge pipe, you can, but I would highly recommend you keeping the screen in there. Or if you're going to do the card style, I would add a screen. So you can buy those the honeycomb. Anytime you guys are seeing guys pull that honeycomb out, it's, it's actually hurting. I promise it's not making a difference power wise. And you actually, I've actually seen them lose power on the dyno. When people have descreened de them, it is not worth it. Anyways, I would recommend a draw through mass airflow sensor. So what you would do is you would take this and multiply this times 0.5 as well. All right, so same thing's gonna be the case with cranking V. We need to half this as well. And that takes care of the fuel side of things. Now, anything you see that is VE based or grams per second based of airflow or anything like that, you're gonna have to half it. The next thing we need to do is roll into our spark tables. Now our spark tables, because we half the injector flow rate and our V number is half, now our cylinder air mass is half. So as you guys are aware, cylinder air mass is what the ECU uses to determine the basically cylinder fill or the amount of airflow we're actually getting into a per cylinder application. So because it is halved on the injector flow rate, that means our cylinder air mass is going to be half in the data log. The ECU sees everything is half. So all you got to do is you're going to take your 16 row, 0.16, Copy it, move it to 0.18. You're gonna do the same thing for this 0.12 row. So you're gonna copy 0.24. Same thing for this 0.16, we're gonna copy 0.32. And we're just gonna continue down. Okay, so now that we have done this, we have basically duplicated what a factory timing table would be on the high octane side on this truck using the half injector flow rate method. So we will have to do the same thing for the low octane table. But if you guys are wondering where we have to go now is we're obviously going to get this truck ready for, for timing under boost. So say the factory truck would have been, we'll say 0.64 to 0 0.72 of grams of cylinder air mass. That's going to work out to roughly 0 0.32 to 0 0.36. So this, this right here, is basically gonna be our factory wide open throttle timing as of right now. So we'll say that this truck is going to do, we'll say it's gonna do double. So say it, I don't know, we're gonna run 10 pounds on it. It ends up working out to, now keep in mind, because of the ECU not being able to take injector flow rate into boost, it is going to skew cylinder air mass. So theoretically, double the cylinder air mass of factory wide open throttle should end up being, you know, double what it is. So say our half injector flow rate, wide open throttle natural aspirator was say 0 0.36, 0 0.72 would be roughly one bar of boost. But because injector flow rate is incorrect, it's going to falsely skew us into different areas of cylinder air mass. Hope that makes sense. You'll be able to see it in a data log a little bit better and you'll understand what's going on. But let's just say at 0.72, let's say right here, let's go on and just pull out, I don't know, let's, better yet, let's just go down to the bottom. Let's go to 1.20. And we'll say that there's no way in hell this truck would ever tolerate 1.20 of, of scaled cylinder air mass, which would be 2.4 grams per cylinder air mass on pump gas in a truck application. So we know that this thing needs to have basically no timing here. So let's just go on and pull out, so let's pull out 20 degrees right here. Now, again, this is just a number I'm just throwing out. You'll have to tune your own vehicle, but so we'll take that and let's scale. Let's go down from, we'll say 0.32. Now let's do 0 0.36, 0 0.36 down. We're just going to interpolate. So now if, if we were to be at 0.72 grams of cylinder air mass, which would be roughly like a one-to-one -one regulated, you know, double atmosphere. Yeah. So two bar, we would have about four degrees of timing in this thing. So obviously it's super conservative, but technically 
as fuel comes in, it's gonna run deeper and deeper into this. So this is just how you kind of get one set up. And then obviously you wanna start feeding in the power. And as you feed in the power, you're gonna be like, okay, no, obviously this thing is under timed. We're gonna keep shoving it back in. So I know I'm gonna have guys ask me about timing. I will tell you that traditional rule of thumb on the Google or Facebook or any of those, traditionally guys will recommend one degree of timing removed for every one PSI boost. That is just like a general rule of thumb some guys will say one and a half in some applications. I'm gonna kind of just say, say this era of 5.3 in this truck application, say this truck like 24 degrees at peak. Now keep in mind, we don't run the same timing at peak torque as what we do at higher RPM. So say just before this thing shifts at, we'll say 5,800, because obviously this truck doesn't have a cam in it. Say there, it would like 24 degrees and we're gonna run 10 pounds of boost. So we would go in and bring it down to 14, but then I'm gonna say pull an additional like four off of that. So let's go in and bring this thing down into like the 10 degrees. So let's just say 10 pounds, 10 degrees for a truck is gonna be in the ballpark of where it's gonna want to be. So you don't wanna have it severely undertimed unless you're running really poor octane of fuel. Like say you're wanting to set a truck up, say you wanna do a 5.3, but you wanna kinda of do it like an EcoBoost style where you do like two really small twin turbos and you want to be able to run 87 octane, it can be done, but that's when you start to get into the really low numbers. Like I'll tell you, say an EcoBoost Mustang, a little 2.3 EcoBoost Mustang, a lot of times they're negative timing when you're doing a pull and they may creep up to like one and a half or two degrees of timing at peak. You're just gonna to have to tune your own application. But anyway, so this is gonna how it's gonna look on a 3D scale. You'll see how it's kind of smooth. And then obviously I would kind of come through here and just work it all in. One thing you will notice when it comes to tuning a turbo vehicle is they do usually like a little bit more timing on, on spool up. So a lot of guys are just going to rip out timing everywhere. And I want you to understand that, that don't be scared. Say, say this truck naturally aspirated again is at, at this 0.36. Don't be scared to put a little bit of timing in right here to help spool that turbo. But timing is obviously a whole nother ball game, whole nother video. But anyway, so you're going to have to go through this. You have to do the same thing for low octane. Now, quick trick that I use for low octane to make the numbers the same. I'll go into open compare file and I'm going to pull back up this same file that we're working on. 2006 Silverado 5.3. Okay, the stock. So what I'll do is we're on the high octane table right now. I'm going to show the difference right now. I'm going to copy the difference. I'm going to come under low octane here. And we're going to paste the difference. And so now our low octane table is set up. We don't have to go through and drop everything down. But anyway, so now that those tables are done, we have to do the same thing for idle spark advance. So it's gonna be the same scenario. Copy the 0.16 row down to 0 0.08. Copy the 0 0.24, 0 0.12, so on. Obviously we have drive, we have park, because this is a truck, so it's gonna be an automatic. In 06, it would have been an automatic is in a half ton. But anyways, you gotta do in park as well. So the next thing we gotta do is we gotta start looking at anything else that is torque based or cylinder air mass based. So we know that under torque model and under loss, we have to keep the ECU happy as far as friction torque goes and AC compressor torque goes and accessory torque. So you come under here, go to friction, you just half this because injector flow rate that's been halved is gonna data log out and the ECU is gonna see a delivered torque value of half. So we need to make sure everything stays together. So half injector flow rate means half torque, means half cylinder air mass, always. Accessory torque, we're gonna to do the same thing, we're gonna half it. AC compressor versus IAT, we're gonna half it. Now, I will tell you that just while we're, while we're right here, a turbo truck, if you're going to put your front mount intercooler in front of your AC condenser, it may bring up your head pressure on your compressor higher. So you've got AC compressor versus AC pressure. You may actually have to populate this table and actually have it add some torque because when that head pressure goes up higher than factory due to a heat soaked intercooler in front of it, the truck may not want to retain idle like it's supposed to. So you may have to populate this. You may have to put in a couple foot pounds of torque here. Also note that this AC compressor versus IAT, just for a tip for you guys that are running camshafts, stock truck, when we've added a turbo, I wouldn't have to touch this, but if we put a, put a camshaft in here, the truck makes less idle torque. Because it makes less idle torque, it actually needs more torque reserve for AC compressor. So some of you guys that say you've tuned your truck, 03 to 06 truck, and idle's perfect, short-term idle trims are good, long-term idle trims are good, everything's happy. Fueling's squared away, timing's good. 
but you go to kick on that AC compressor and it just pulls itself down. You can add some torque right here and it'll help negate that. Same thing works for F body OS's on uh, the PL1 ECU, so blue, uh, yeah, blue red Corvettes, all that stuff. This table can be utilized. Airflow. So cylinder charge temperature. This is basically going to dictate how the ECU develops manifold air temp. It's calculation. So if you have put a turbocharger on a factory truck, I would highly advise you to break the intake temp out of the mass airflow sensor. Even if you've got the map in the charge pipe, I would highly recommend you breaking it out and go ahead on and putting it in the intake manifold. Otherwise, get it as close to the throttle body as humanly possible. So if you have your intake temp sensor in the intake manifold, what you would do is you come over here to cylinder charge temperature and you can disable this. Now, I have seen times where even if you click disable the complex model, it still seems to skew your IET calculations versus VE. So you can come in here to bias. You can just make this zero come over here to filter and you can make this one and that effectively does the same thing. I actually just click yes and just have it to where it's one. That's essentially the same thing. If I'm tuning it, I will go ahead on and do all three of those. But again, this is for charge air temp. So now say your mass airflow sensor is on the inlet side of the compressor, of the turbo, and you still want to leave your IET there. Then this all needs to stay stock. So there's nothing wrong with this staying stock. It, it, what it's gonna do is it's gonna take a calculation of airflow coming in. It knows that low airflow coming in, that there's gonna have a lot of time for the intake, that the air, the air charge, to saturate in the cylinder heads and intake manifold, and it's gonna come obviously from the coolant temp. So at lower airflows, it bases more towards engine coolant temp is what the intake temp is. And then at higher airflows, obviously there's less time for everything to bake essentially. So it's gonna look more towards the actual intake temp sensor itself. But anyways, IET is definitely something that you have to think about whenever you're doing a tune on a Gen 3 engine. All right, so anyways, we're gonna keep going. Dynamic airflow. Obviously I've talked about how to put this thing in speed density. Again, if I was tuning this my way, I would retain the math. I would keep it hybrid. Everything would be legit. But if you're gonna to need to do speed density, obviously just put this as, you can put this at a number that's at non achievable 8,000, 12,800, whatever you wanna do, that's what you can do. Electronic throttle, we don't have to touch in this application. Exhaust, we don't have to touch. Fuel, we don't really have to touch because we've already half our injector flow rate. Cranking fuel, all that stuff, we all should be fine. Cranking fuel should be fine because our stoic is the same. Now we can obviously change this. If we're not gonna run flex, we can just come in here and make this a 14.1, which brings up to 14.12, that's completely fine. Oxygen sensors, we don't have to touch any of this stuff for this application. Obviously I would eliminate long-term fuel trims if it's a turbo vehicle, but it doesn't matter in this video. Open loop, base fuel, don't have to touch anything here. Power enrich. All right, so now we have the availability for boost enrichment, which is EQ ratio versus MAP. So what this is gonna do is this tells us that at this manifold air pressure, it's gonna command this equivalence ratio. So first and foremost, let's go in and fill this in. And so one thing to note, any generation of the GM ECUs is always gonna go for whichever table has the highest equivalence ratio commanded. So if we were to set this table up like I normally would, a lot of times it would actually revert back to this because on a stock truck, they request, they're, they're commanding it pretty rich up top. So let's go on and just change this. This is the normal EQ ratio, like power enrichment table. So let's just make this 1.195. Now, again, this is not a number that I would normally use while tuning. This is just, this is again for video purpose. So we'll make that. So EQ ratio versus map. So let's say at hundred KPA, we're, we're gonna want those same 1.195. And then we can actually add fuel as boost increases, which works out really good if you have a manual boost controller or any type of boost controller, the truck's gonna automatically adapt both with timing and with air fuel ratio. So, Let's just say 150 KPA. Let's make this 1.282 because again, this is a truck and this is on pump gas. And then we're just going to interpolate. Let's say at 180, let's do 1.315. 315. I'm going to interpolate. And let's just say 210. Let's just make this 1.351. And then we're going to interpolate. So this is just kind of rough it in and you guys will kind of see how it comes in. Obviously in the higher boost numbers, we do need more fuel. In the lesser boost numbers, you don't need a ton of fuel to make it happy. And again, you can tune this on your own vehicle. So at, on spool up, if you want to keep this a little bit leaner, especially if you're on ethanol, you can keep this lean if you want and have it to where it comes in. 
but I'm just showing you just how this works. So next thing I will do is especially for cruise applications and especially if you've got a fairly responsive turbo, I prefer to have more of a TPS based power enrichment, but with the turbo charger, you actually get up to the enable map pretty quick. So what I'll do is I'll make this minimum map 95 and that will allow the truck to stay out of power enrichment so much. Cause again, you don't really need it. We're not overtiming this thing. We're treating this like it's going to be an OE application, but with a turbo charger. So we're trying to think about how GM would have done it off the showroom floor. The next thing we're going to do is we're just going to make this a number that it would be dialed in differently. It depends on gear ratio. It depends on the weight of the truck. Like if it's a crew cab versus single cab as to what TPS we really need to bring it in. But just, just for shits and giggles, we'll just say, we'll call it 30%. We'll just make it 30% across the board. So what this is going to do is it's going to tell us at 30% throttle and above 95 KPA, we're going to trigger this power enrichment right here. Now this enable map, I usually will make mine 105. So for this 10 KPA gap, it's going to run off this power enrichment, no matter what this number is going to run this. And then once it crosses this 105 KPA, we actually come into our boost map. So then it starts to add additional fuel for the commanded boost. This works out good again for doing it in this application. This is definitely how I would run this table. Now it's not the exact numbers because obviously you have to tune it for your specific vehicle. Again, I have to keep reiterating that a heavier truck, like a crew cab, say it's a crew cab four wheel drive on 37s with a 4L60 is not going to take the timing that a single cab short bed with a 456 gear and a 20 inch tall tire is going to take. You guys have to understand that timing is load based. The amount of fuel we need is load based. The truck, like when it comes to fuel, and maybe you understand this with power enrichment, maybe you don't. Stoic makes the most power, technically. But because of Stoic, when we start to add the load, we become octane limited. So if you had some really, really, really good octane of fuel, like a C16 or something, you can actually run it at Stoic. And it's totally okay on a natural aspirate engine. You can bring in just a little bit under boost and it's fine. You know, you may see some guys on C16 or Q16 and they're making passes and it looks like a diesel, you know, at, at the uh, drag strip. They're running them too rich. You don't need to have it that rich. Stoic makes maximum power, but we have to add fuel for cooling and detonation, not control. So that is one way to always think about it. As long as the air fuel ratio is in the ballpark and timing is in the ballpark, it's going to have all the power it needs. Now, obviously turbocharged vehicles, as we've talked about in other videos, I may leave 40 or 50 horsepower off the table that another tuner may find. It's not because I don't know where it's at. It's because I want to keep it reliable. Anyways, let's continue to roll on. Temperature control. We don't have to touch this for this application. We don't have to touch any of these in this application. Now on Gen 4 stuff, you'll see that some of this is cylinder air mass based. So if you want to keep deceleration fuel cut off, which I always do, unless somebody tells me otherwise, I'll, you have to half cylinder air mass as well under here. Lean fuel savings, we don't have to touch. Transient fuel, we don't have to touch. Flex fuel, we obviously don't have to touch. We've already done our timing tables. Now, obviously we haven't done all of these, but also keep in mind too, that we've done these, but we also have to do our flex fuel stuff. So all of this would have to move the same way. So 0.16 would go down to 0.08, all that. If we were filling all that out, you have to do the same thing with your intake temp tables. So all this needs to be moved as well. Coolant temp tables, all that has to be moved as well. MBT, this table, it needs to be moved as well. So some guys will forget about all about this table, but this table is what the ECU really uses. It leans on it to develop its torque. As we talked about in the torque based transmission video, 4L60, 4L80, it's torque based. We need MBT to be correct. All right, if you want to keep burst knock, you would go this enable Delta cylinder air and you would want to cut this in half. If you want it to work like factory, if I was tuning this truck, exactly the way we've talked about in this video, I would leave burst knock and I would half this just like that. Now, obviously this is going to be the same scenario here. So if you ever run into a situation on a P59 or any type of gen three ECU to where the truck is not going into power enrichment, it's traditionally because you've maxed out these values. And if you go under fuel power enrich and this min torque, you've, you've surpassed that threshold to where it's not actually seeing the hundred percent torque. So if you want to just make this the easy way, you can just make this zero and zero. That'll work. If you want to leave it like factory, you can, but if you leave this like factory, then you have to make sure that this makes sense too. So we would want to take all of these and half them. 
theoretically, if we're going to be on 14 pounds or 10 pounds of boost or whatever, we should be able to actually leave these numbers alone. And they're essentially doubled them from factory. If that makes sense. Again, I know it's a lot to talk about, but that is one thing that needs to be done. So all of these tables, just remember everything is half. So we've already talked about all of this stuff. None of this needs to be touched. Same thing with torque here, your ramp in and ramp out. You can half if you feel necessary. So you can half all of these. So if we, you know, if we want to make this two, two, because again, if we're going to tune this like it's a um, truck, we would have to move this down. So eight would become four, 16 would become eight. And we go all the way down because this is the delay in reference pulses and, and the axis itself is torque. Same thing here. So that takes care of us on the engine side. Next thing you know, we need to go over to engine diag. So airflow based. So first and foremost, a lot of guys will get a PO, uh, PO 106. This right here, calculated map max. You can just take this up to as much as the map sensor will allow for. So technically, if you wanted to keep this, say you only wanted to run 180 KPA and you want the truck to go into a limp mode after that, you could technically make this like 185 or something. And the truck would throw a PO 106 as soon as you cross that threshold. So you can utilize it, some of this stuff if you want, but anyways, we'll leave it at 200 for now. This one gets a lot of people on the P59 stuff, this uh, calc air mass. So technically if we leave this completely alone right now, it is actually doubled from factory. So it really should be fine. But if you you know find yourself crossing the threshold to where this code, this uh, P1514 or P0068 is actually being thrown, you can increase this however much you need to. Most guys just max this out. I don't, I try to make it make sense. But anyways, maximum del delta airflow. This is also an error. This right here, because we halved, it makes everything half. Technically this should still be able to stay fine, but if you need to tune it, this causes the PO 101, you can tune this as well. So then we roll into trans and trans is the final step of this. And trans is just like what we talked about in another video. So you have to do shift timing. You have to move everything down for torque on it. Same thing with shift pressures. You have to move it down from here. So again, if it's 40, it needs to go down to 20, 80 needs to go down to 40. Again, anything that runs torque on the axis, you have to scale the table. So that handles the 4L60 on this, as long as you make sure that stuff is followed. Same with torque reduction here. Um, if it's populated, you know, this is a percent of torque, you can actually half it. So under performance, it should be populated. Yeah, so we can actually take this and we can actually half this. And that's gonna make it the correct amount of torque reduction from the factory. Trans, diag, we don't have to touch. Fuel system, we don't have to touch. Normal system, we don't have to touch. Other than this is one that a lot of guys miss. I have this in several of the videos, but you'll go under system, system options. Make sure to turn off this brake torque management right here. So you'll see GMT 800, brake torque management. If it's a one, that means it's active. If it's a zero, it means it's off. So we just turn that off. And that literally covers it. So when it comes to tuning, I'm sure you guys are aware now, I try to make everything to, to emulate what factory would have done had they had these modifications. Everything that I've told you in tonight's video is not set in stone. You can tune it your own way. I just try to explain this stuff and give you an idea of how I would start it. And I am literally that kind of OCD person where if somebody brought me in this exact combination, I would have actually built this file exactly how you saw me do it in this video. I would have done exactly like that, loaded it into the truck, and then I would have started tuning from there. So again, guys, if you have any questions, leave me a comment. Um, if you want to join the membership, the membership will have detailed videos like this and then some. There's always a button below that says join, and then there's a link in the bottom in the description. You can click that. There's also some cool stuff from Amazon that I always have in all the videos. The link to HP Tuners, the MPVI 3 that you would need to tune. A good link to a wideband. That's the AEM that we use run like hand-based vehicles and above. And I also have a good tuning book down below for Greg Banish. So please always check out my descriptions. I always try to keep everybody informed. If you need remote tuning, remember my website is skytuning.com, tunernocrust.com, tuning-tips.com. Any of those, you'll find my website. And again, please bear with me. Website's under construction. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.